Hello, I'm Kristen, and I just want to welcome you back to Writer's Block today. Today's class, we're going to be going over a topic maybe you've already thought about. You know, how do we as writers go from the idea stage to actually publishing a book? And so we're going to talk about Publishing 101 in our time today. We're going to talk about publishing terms, which you may or may not be familiar with, then we'll talk about types of publishing and also how to deal with the reality of rejection. Then we'll talk about some practical takeaways that you as a young writer today can start. You can start practicing to prepare perhaps to publish one day. And then as always, we'll wrap everything up with a writing activity. So I hope you've got something to write with. Let's get started. Publishing 101. So again, today we're going to break down some of the basics and see how young writers that you are, how you can be productive today to prepare to maybe one day make those publishing dreams come true. So as always, we're going to start with the word of the day. And today's word is actually an acronym. And the word is ARC or ARCs. And that abbreviation does not have anything to do with the ark that Noah built. But do you have any guesses what it stands for? So arcs stand for advanced reader copies or the pre-published drafts or galleys of a book. And so I included a, an image here of an actual paperback arc for my latest book, The Reactionary. And what authors will do is create street teams or launch teams, and these advanced readers will post reviews and just help promote the release. So they're kind of like the team an author builds to help get other readers excited for the new book that's coming out. In addition to ARCs, we're going to be talking about some other basic vocabulary today for publishing. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to briefly read through these. And if you have any questions or you want more information about any of these terms, or maybe you have another publishing term that you've heard, but you're not sure what it means, feel free to message me in the comments or reach out to me on my website, kristenhogreff.com, and I'd be happy to, to help answer any other questions you have. So here we go. Genre. That's the type of book you're writing. So it could be fiction or nonfiction. And then within those two broad categories, you can have dozens of subgenres. The audience, who are you writing for? And that's so important to remember because we're not writing for ourselves unless we're journaling <laughs> and we're not going to publish our journals, right? Um, so who are you writing for? So important to remember. The manuscript is our hopefully completed story. The unsolicited manuscript. This is when you submit a, a book or a manuscript to an editor without the editor specifically requesting it first. And a lot of publishing houses will allow you to submit unsolicited manuscripts. A lot of times it just takes longer for them to go through than if you had met them, say, at a conference and they had specifically requested you to send your manuscript to them. Query is the carefully drafted letter to an editor that oftentimes will accompany your manuscript. Acquisition, that's the process, the beginning of a contract relationship with an agent or publisher. And so an agent is not a publisher. An agent represents you to publishers. And as an author, you do or don't have to have one. So they're not required, but oftentimes they can help get your foot in a door that you otherwise wouldn't know about. And then, of course, the publisher. That's the publishing house and the, the person who will be publishing your book if you're going the traditional route. And we'll talk about types of publishing in just a minute. Contract is what every writer wants if we're trying to get published. That just means someone has said, yes, I believe in your story and I want to help get this out to the world. Mainstream is a term that refers to writing for the general market versus just the Christian market. And again, there's definitely benefits um, to going mainstream, but there's also limitations. 
An editor is the publishing house representative who will consider your manuscript. And again, we already talked about an agent. That's just the representative or mediator between you and a publisher. Conferences, I think I mentioned that a little bit earlier. That's the place where you have the chance to do FaceTime with editors and agents, where you can get that immediate feedback and also build some relationships with industry professionals who can help you polish your craft. And then the proposal, that's the detailed document you would submit along with your manuscript. It goes through so much information, you know, your synopsis, your um, what are some comparable titles that your book is similar to but also different. Uh, what's your credibility as a writer or why are you the person who should be writing this book? So there is so much information in a proposal and writing a good proposal is oftentimes just as or more important than even the manuscript itself. Some more publishing words and again these are in no particular order. A pitch is an elevator speech that sums up your story's premise. And by elevator speech, I mean it's short. So think of the time it would take you to have a conversation with someone in an elevator, and that's about the length your pitch should be. And here I give you a, an example pitch for my novel, The Revisionary. It answers the who, what, and why. Why would readers be interested in my story? Or what is gonna be so compelling about this plot? So top draft pick, Portia Abernathy, plans to win a revisionary seat in the dome and rescue her exiled brother. But when she discovers the true purpose of the satellite camps, she must go rogue to do what's right. So again, who, what, why, really short and sweet summary of your story if it's nonfiction and then you'd have a similar concept if it, I mean if it's fiction and then if it's nonfiction you would still have a pitch but obviously it wouldn't be uh, a narrative in nature unless it were say a memoir. All right some other terms royalty is your percentage of the sales, advance is a down payment of your royalty only really large publishing houses typically do advances so that's a lot um, a lot more rare, but they still they still do happen on occasion. Platform are your writing credentials, your social media presence, anything that sets you apart as an expert. We already talked about ARCs, those advanced reader copies. And then rejection letters, those are just a reality of writing. Um, nobody wants to receive them, but if you submit, <laughs> you will ultimately get them. But we're also going to talk about how to cope with those, so don't be discouraged if, if you ever receive one. Alright, so types of publishing. And this is again just a big picture overview. You've got your traditional publishers, and these can be small presses to big houses. All a traditional publisher means is that they are going to cover the cost of your publication and provide you with a royalty and some houses may offer advances as well. Self-published or indie publishing on the other hand means that you're paying to publish your book and you own all the rights. You can purchase as many or as few copies as you want and you can also determine the types of platform where you publish. You know, is it just going to be an ebook, say through Kindle direct publishing or Kindle? Um, or are you also going to publish a paperback or har hardback copies? So you have a lot more control, but you are also 100% responsible for every step of the process. And then some, some writers are considered hybrid writers, where they are both traditionally published, but then they also self-publish some other books that maybe a traditional house just wouldn't be interested in. So there's lots of types, um, lots of different types of scenarios as well. But the key really here is to avoid any publisher who is saying they're going to require you to pay them big bucks to publish your books. And they're also going to require you to buy a large quantity up front because writers typically are rarely going to recover those costs. So that option um, you'll probably find if you do look into this down the road, you want to make sure you avoid that, that type of option. And yes. Throughout this process, re rejection is just a reality and it hurts, right? When somebody rejects something you do or um, just isn't interested 
it hurts. We, we oftentimes take it personally. And I thought this was such an accurate quote from that book we've been going through, Creative Writing for People Who Can't Not Write. It says, it is hard to separate a sense of rejection of oneself personally from simply rejection of one's work. But keep in mind, there are several reasons for rejection. It doesn't mean you're not a good writer. Let's take a, let's take a look through these, and I hope they'll be encouraging to you if down the road you do experience rejection, if you continue to pursue writing. Um, just keep these in mind. It's from Steve Lobby. His blog is excellent, and if you want to get more information on the publishing industry, I highly recommend it. So what are some reasons for rejection? Not them. In other words, your piece wasn't a good fit for that particular publisher or agent. Maybe it's just not something they're looking for right now. Doesn't mean you're not a good writer. Not now. Maybe the timing for your piece is off. Maybe the publisher that you really wanted to go with just picked up another piece, very similar or on the same topic. So they just don't, they don't have room for the same type of writing. Not this. You might be a good writer, but this particular piece doesn't interest them. So you could always go back and pitch something else later. Not yet. Maybe your pitch isn't quite sharp enough or it needs polishing. So go back and do some more work on it and then try again. I know in my personal experience, some houses encourage resubmissions after you've taken their suggestions into consideration or not ready. You know, maybe we just need more practice. So go back and keep polishing. I also wanted to share, again, not to be a downer, but just the reality of being a writer. I think a lot of times we glamorize it um, in our minds, but we also do have to be realistic. So there are those 100 cares, as the written word media.com explains. Um, these authors do very well. However, this category only accounts for about 11% of all authors. Most authors are EAs, or emerging authors, who earn less than $500 a year from book sales. In other words, they also have another, probably another full-time job. Um, and so it's just not something they, you know, they don't hit that magical success. Doesn't mean they're not a good writer. It just is a reality, okay? So just some key takeaways. Success takes time. And some things you can do, again, down the road, if you do want to pursue publishing, is you can spend and invest on a professional cover and working with a professional editor. And really, realistically, writers shouldn't quit their day jobs. Um, I liked this quote. It says, our takeaway is that having a day job or relying on a spouse's income is pretty typical for writers of all kinds. And I just thought that was very realistic, practical um, advice, again, from the written word media.com. So some perspective, okay? I loved these two quotes, one by John Ruskin, who said, the highest reward for man's toil is not what he gets for it, but what he becomes by it. So well said. And then Winston Churchill, you know, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So yes, rejection is a reality, but we can totally overcome it. All right, so what should you do right now? Practice <laughs> and practice some more. Um, take opportunities where you are. So if your school has a newsletter, join it. And of course, participate in writer's block right here. Another tip is to read extensively in the genre or type of writing that interests you. And then start a writing resume. You know, if you do win a contest or if you do write for a newsletter, keep track of it and you'll build your writing resume that way. You can also tell others, parents, friends, mentors you have about your interest in writing because maybe they know somebody who can help you get some experience. Morgan Elbus, she is an excellent writer of Christian young adult fantasy, and I actually interviewed her about one of her releases on my website, 
and you can read the full interview there, but I wanted to share this quote because one of the questions I asked her what was, would be what was her advice for young writers? And here's what she had to say. One, study the craft of writing. Read books, go to conferences, follow the newsletters of those who teach. Two, write, write, write. You only become good by practicing. A friend of mine once said that most people need to write a million words before they start writing something worth reading. Third, live life. Don't forget to spend time with your family. Go for a walk. Enjoy life. The writing is always there, but if you aren't living, you will have nothing to write about. Such good advice from Morgan. And then look for those writing opportunities right where you are. So these are just a few ideas. Maybe you can even think of some more on your own. But one would be to look for maybe local writing conferences. Several conferences do offer team tracks and usually provide discounts for teenagers. And you can even apply for conference scholarships to help offset the costs. You can also participate in contests. Tales of the Lonely Sun is actually a blog that one of my students or a couple of students from my school created and they host contests for teen writers. You've also got Go Teen Writers. And again, conferences often have contests as well. You can also join a writing group. There's groups, um, maybe your school has a student center and there's writing groups there. Or Word Weavers, I'm a member, and you can do online or in-person groups. And the cost is usually at a discount for teens. If you need more information or if you'd like more information, please email me and reach out to me that way. And then you can also follow writers you admire just by signing up for their newsletters or even engaging with them on social media if your parents are okay with that. And then finally, read books about the craft. And on this screen, I just listed several resources. Um, these are a great start, but again, not exhaustive. All right, so now it's your turn. The only way to become a better writer is to be a better reader. And so your assignment today is to write a brief review of the last book you read, approximately 100 words. And bonus, if you actually take the time to review it and add your review to Amazon and Goodreads, because it's such great practice for you um, and you'll be paying it forward because reviews mean so much to authors. And then also as a tip, looking ahead, if you want to get published one day, you want to read in the genre that you want to write because that'll also help you down the road when you format a proposal. You'll know competitive titles. You'll know where your book would belong on a bookshelf in a bookstore or in a library. So that's it for today. I hope this, I know today's, <laughs> today's time together was a lot of information, but if you have any questions, please reach out and as always, write on.